Good morning. I'm so excited to continue reading Shiloh with you. Remember, I left you off on a cliffhanger. Why did the dog's bark not work? <laughs> so I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about some reasons why a dog's bark wouldn't work. They've overbarked, so they lost their bark. Just like, you know, if you ever talk, if you say too much, if you do too much, you know, you strain your voice, right? Or maybe something really crazy really cray cray happened to them. So like maybe because this puppy, he just found it out in the woods, maybe it got cut. You know, like I was trying to think of like some different ways. Of course, I've read the book, so I do know. However, I'm just trying to get you guys to think creatively and guess it. Be the detective, the reading detective. I know you are. <laughs> All right, I'll stop being weird because I'm totally by myself and it's very weird not doing it with you guys, but I'm trying to still be cool. All right, so... Because I think it is. All right. So with that being said, wait, I don't know how to like turn it back around. So I'm sorry. Okay. So notice a note. As I'm reading today, um, we are going to be thinking about the tough questions the character is going to be asking himself. So he finds this dog and he's going to start asking himself some tough questions basically about this dog. Usually... These tough questions are when they're, um, when the reader is like trying to change himself. However, these tough questions in chapter one, because it's only fresh and at the beginning of the book, these tough questions are 100% all about the dog and to learn more about the character and the dog. So that's why we really need to pay attention to the tough questions. So, what does this question make me wonder? So if you want to be an overachiever, which I highly expect you guys to be because you guys are overachievers, I expect you guys to write these down because as we continue reading, then you could put all the puzzle pieces together and at the end, do a beautiful written question. If you don't, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to force you, but I want you to. Okay, so when you're reading... And a character asks himself a really difficult question. You should stop and ask yourself, what does this make me wonder? Okay, everyone, make your wonder face. Those are fun wonder faces, right? Um, I hope yours were as cool as mine. Okay, so the answer will tell you about the conflict and might give you ideas about what will happen later in the story. Okay? So... When you're reading at home, okay, you got to do this too. So when you're reading your chapter books that I made sure you guys all try to go back to the library that Friday before. Um, so you guys should have checked out books where the characters, because you guys are all, you guys all have nonfiction books or fiction books. Most of you check out fiction books. Um, if not, go on Epic, read a book there. Um, I want you to be thinking what tough questions are these um characters asking themselves because that will tell you about the conflict and might give you ideas about what will happen later in the story. So these tough questions are going to make you wonder. Here we go. <clears throat> Let me set it up. Sorry. It's probably going to slip 500 times because that's cool too. Okay. 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 We're just going to hold it. All right. So we stopped off at the dog gets back, the dog gets up and backs off. He don't even whimper like he's lost his bark. He don't even whimper. What kind of jargon is that? Country. Something really hurts inside. You know, you know, when you see a dog cringe like that, you know, somebody's been kicking at him, beating on him, maybe. It's okay, boy, I say, coming a little closer, but he still backs off. So I just take my gun and follow the river. Every so often, I look over my shoulder, and there he is, the beagle. Not bagel, beagle. Beagle's like a type of dog. Oh, they do that. They're normally like hunting dogs. I stop. He stops. I can see his ribs. Not real bad, but he isn't plump out or anything. There's a broken branch hanging from a limb over there, over the water, and I'm wondering... If I can bring it down with one shot, 
I've raised my gun. Remember, he does not like to shoot at living things. He likes to shoot at other things for target practice. So just like random things. And then I think how the sound might scare the dog off. I decide I won't, I don't want to shoot my gun much that day. It's a slow river. You walk beside it, you figure it's not even moving. If you stop though, you can see the leaves and things going along. And then, and then, oh, sorry. Now and then the jump fish, the little, 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 a fish jumps, big fish, bass, I think. Dog still trailing me, tail tucked in. Funny how he don't make a sound. Finally, I sit on a log put my gun at my feet and wait. Back down the road, the dog sits too. Sits right in the middle of it. Head on paws. Here, boy, I say again and pat my knee. He wiggles just a little, but he don't come. Maybe it's a she dog. Here, girl, I say. Dog still don't come. I decide to wait the dog out, but after three or four minutes on the log, it gets boring, and I start off again. So does the beagle. Don't know where you'd end up if you followed the river all the way. Heard somebody say it curves about, comes back on itself, but if it didn't and I got home after dark, I'd get a good whopping. So I always go as far as the ford where... I lost my place, where the river spills across the path. And then I head back. When I turn around and the dog sees me coming, he goes off into the woods. I figure that's the last time I'll see that beagle. And I get halfway down the road again, and I look back. There he is. I stop. He stops. I go. He goes. And then hardly thinking on it, I whistle. <laughs> It's like pressing a magic button. The beagle comes barreling toward me. Legs going lickety. Got to turn the page. Split. Long ears flopping, tail sticking up like a flagpole. This time, when I put out my hand, he licks all over my fingers and jumps up against my leg, making little yelps in his throat. He can't get enough of me. Like I'd been saying no all along. And now I'd say yes, he could come. It's a he dog, like I thought. Hey boy, you really something. Now ain't you. I'm laughing as the beagles make circles around me. I squat down and the dog licks my face, my neck. Where'd he learn to come if you whistle to hang back if you don't? I'm so busy watching the dog, I don't even notice it started to rain. Okay, let's stop for a hot second. It says, Where'd he learn to come if you whistle to hang back if you didn't? Okay, so he's, so the character is questioning himself. He's saying, so where did this dog learn to come? If I go, <whistles> that means come, right? Like watch, like, oh, we could do a real life example. Oh my gosh. <whistles> I'm not, I know the, <whistles> let's see if Grayson comes. And there she comes. Real life example, right? Well, she didn't all the way come to me because she's a stubborn dog, you know. <laughs> Anywho, and she's also a girl and this dog was a boy. Maybe that's, I don't know. Anywho, so with that being said, the character asks himself, where'd he learn to come if you whistle? Okay, so they came, the dog came, but to hang back if you didn't. So if you don't whistle, then the dog doesn't do anything. It just stays away. And if we picked up on the context clues, the dog stayed away but would still follow, but seemed kind of timid, right? So, anyway, so it starts to rain. Don't bother me. Don't bother the dog neither. I'm looking for the place I first saw him. Does he live here, I wonder, or the house up on up the road? Each place we pass, I figure he'll stop. Somebody come out and whistle, maybe, but nobody comes out, and the dog don't stop. He keeps coming even after we get to the old Shiloh dog schoolhouse. So Shiloh is a town, okay? Even starts across the bridge, tail going like a propeller. He licks my hand every so often to make sure I'm still there. Mouth open like he's smiling. He is smiling. Okay, so at first we learned when the dog stayed back, 
he was kind of timid. He kind of didn't pay attention, or well, he paid attention and he followed and everything, but he was timid. And timid is like, uh, uh, what do I do? I'm scared, I'm nervous, but I want to be with you. You know, so when you're timid, you're, you're nervous, you're scared. Um, but now that he greeted him in, by whistling, now the dog really loves this little boy. Once he follows me across the bridge, though, and on past the <clears throat> grits mill, I start to worry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Looks like he's fixing to follow me all the way to our house. I'm in trouble. Enough coming home with my clothes wet. My mama's, my ma's mama died of pneumonia, and we don't ever get the chance to forget it. And now I got a dog with me, and we will never be allowed to have pets. If you can't afford to feed them and take them, to the vet, when they're sick, you have no right taking them in, Ma says, which is true enough. I don't say a word to the beagle the rest of the way home, hoping he'll turn at some point and go back. The dog keeps coming. I get to the front stoop and say, go home, boy. And then I feel my heart squeeze up the way he stops smiling, sticks his tail between his legs, and slinks off. Okay, those are context clues that the dog is timid. Let me go back and say it. His tail goes between his legs and he slinks off. So he stops smiling. Okay. And his tail goes between his leg and he slinks off. So like, I'm thinking of the dog from Toy Story. Mainly because he was kind of like partially slinky and partially dog, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I, I, anyways. But when he slinks off, so that means that he's kind of like walking away. So I'm trying to visualize as I read, especially a chapter book. You have to visualize because if you're not visualizing, they're not getting the full effect of the book. So this character keeps asking himself questions about this dog because he's trying to figure out what's the deal with it, what's going on, what's happening with it. So whose dog is that? Ma asks when I come in. I shrug. Just followed me uh, is all. Where do where where to pick up with you? Dad asks. Up in Shiloh, across the bridge. I say. On the road by the river. Bet that's Jed's Traverse Beagle, Dad says. He got himself another hunting dog a few weeks back. Judd got him a hunting dog? How come he don't treat him right? I ask. How you know he don't? Way the dog acts, scared to pee almost, I say. Ma gives me a look. Don't seem to me he's got any marks on him. Dad says, studying from our window, don't have to mark a dog to hurt him, I'm thinking. But he didn't say it, right? Just don't pay him any attention. He'll go away, Dad says. I don't like that advice. That's not words of wisdom. And to get out of those wet clothes, Ma tells me, you want to follow your grandma Slater to the grave? I change my clothes, then sit down and turn on the TV which only has two channels. On Sunday afternoons, it's preaching and baseball. I watch baseball for an hour, then I get up and sneak to the window. Ma knows what I'm about. That shallow dog still out there, she asks. I nod. He's looking at me. He sees me there at the window, and his tail starts to thump. I name him Shiloh. So, End of chapter one. Um, so that took a lot longer, I know. Um, but the character asked himself some key questions. So those made me wonder more. What's this dog situation? Where is he from? Why is he just wandering in the woods? What's going on? What might happen to him if he goes back to his owner? Does he have an owner? See, I'm wondering all these things. Now, what you could have been doing as I was reading is jotting down everything that you're wondering also. Um, because then that's going to get you to pay attention to the plot, to the climax, to what's going to happen later, to the problem. Okay, all these things, when a, when a character asks himself a question, a tough question at that, it'll all lead up to what the problem is, the climax, and then how it's resolved. So tough questions as you're reading, whatever you're reading, Think of the tough questions that the character asks himself or herself because that's key into revealing the problem and the solution. I love when a good mystery is solved. So 
I will post chapter two next. I'm going to read that once I get some water and some breakfast and to be continued. All right.